the divine pregnancy of the Princess of Heaven, had advanced to its fifth month, when the most chaste Joseph, her husband, commenced to notice the condition of the Virgin. One day, when St. Joseph was full of anxious doubts and saw her coming out of her oratory, he noticed more particularly this evident change, without being able to explain away what he saw so clearly with his eyes. Yet, though overwhelmed by the evidence of this change in his spouse, he gave his thoughts no greater liberty than to admit what his eyes could not fail to perceive. For being a holy and just man, although he saw the effect, he withheld his judgment as to the cause. Without doubt, if the saint had believed that his spouse had any guilt in causing this condition, he would have died of sorrow. In the midst of these tormenting anxieties, the holy spouse Joseph appealed to the tribunal of the Lord in prayer, and placing himself in his presence, he said, Most high Lord and God, my desires and sighs are not unknown to thee. I find myself cast about by the violent waves of sorrow, which through my senses have come to afflict my heart. I have given myself over with entire confidence to the spouse whom thou hast given me. I have confided entirely in her holiness, and the signs of this unexpected change in her are giving rise to tormenting and fearful doubts, lest my confidence be misplaced. Nothing have I until now seen in her which would give occasion for any doubt in her modesty and her extraordinary virtue. Yet, at the same time, I cannot deny that she is pregnant. To think that she has been unfaithful to me and has offended thee would be temerity in view of such rare purity and holiness. To deny what my own eyes perceive is impossible. But it is not impossible that I die of grief, unless there is some mystery hidden beneath it which I cannot yet fathom. Reason proclaims her as blameless, while the senses accuse her. She conceals from me the cause of her pregnancy, while I have it before my eyes. What shall I do? We both have come to an agreement concerning our vows of chastity. I withhold and defer my judgment. Not being able to penetrate to the cause of what I see, I pour out in thy presence my afflicted soul. The Most High sent his archangel Gabriel in order to reveal to Joseph during his sleep the mystery of the Incarnation and Redemption in the words recorded in the Gospel. Joseph heard and understood all that Saint Gabriel had said, that he should not be afraid to remain with his spouse Mary, because what she bore in her womb was the work of the Holy Spirit, that she would give birth to a son who should be called Jesus and who was to be the Savior of his people that in all this should be fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, who said, A virgin shall conceive and shall bring forth a son, who was to be called Emmanuel, God is with us. St. Joseph did not see the angel by imaginary image. He heard only the interior voice, and he understood the mystery. The words of the angel imply that St. Joseph had in his mind already resolved to sever his connection with Most Holy Mary, for he was told to receive her again without fear. St. Joseph awoke with the full consciousness that his spouse was the true mother of God. Full of joy on account of his good fortune and of his inconceivable happiness, and at the same time deeply moved by sudden sorrow for what he had done, he prostrated himself to the earth, and with many other humble, reverential, and joyful tokens of his feelings, he performed heroic acts of humiliation and of thanksgiving. He gave thanks to the Lord for having revealed to him this mystery, and for having made him the husband of her whom God had chosen for his mother, notwithstanding that he was not worthy to be even her slave. O chaste spouse of Mary most holy, glorious Saint Joseph, great was the trouble and anguish of your heart when you were minded to put away privately your inviolate spouse. Yet your joy was unspeakable when the surpassing mystery of the Incarnation was made known to you by the angel. By this sorrow and this joy, we beseech you to comfort our souls, both now and in the sorrows of our final hour, with the joy of a good life and a holy death, after the pattern of your own, in the arms of Jesus and Mary. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.